welcome back. It's Judy Love Bowman, a.k.a. Dr. Judy Online, and I'm delighted to continue reading from Peaches, Woman's Thoughts on Finding Peace, Overcoming Peril, and Tapping Power. Today we'll be reading from chapters 11 and 12, the final two chapters in the book, and they're brief but very important. So, we'll begin for those of you who are reading along with us on page 269, chapter 11, our homework. Number one, our first assignment is to have a personal accountability. Our first assignment is to have personal accountability for the changes we would like to see. We can begin by being optimistic and having faith that things can get better. The Apostle Paul said faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see, Hebrews 11 and 1. Then we can plan to participate in each election and each school-related activity if you are a parent or a primary attachment figure. Number two, our second assignment is to unify. We need unity within our own community before we can expect America to change. If you are a reality television fan, you love to see people boast about and explain the uh, Armenian, Persian, Jewish, and WASP elite cultures. We need to define, establish, and be proud of the peach culture. Even if we're not physically united, we need to have a consciousness of unity, similar to that of some other racial ethnic groups. We're required to change this nation by praying, developing and implementing programs which will encourage each woman, each family to thrive. God is big enough to bless everyone in the entire world at the same time. If he blesses you, it does not discount my blessing and vice versa. I had a church associate tell me, if you preach at that church, you're going to make her, her look good because she's the first lady. I'm trying to make Jesus look good, popular, and famous, and teach the young people things I wish I had known years ago. The competition should not be about who, who gets the credit or the shine. The, the contest should be to make the world a better place with more love and to win as many people for Jesus with love. The songwriter said, they'll know we are Christians by our love. The unhealthy competition and disunity among blacks has its root in slavery. Some competition is inspirational, but unhealthy competition can be brutal. It needs to change so it does not continue to paralyze the unity in the black community, black families, and churches. As you know, the unhealthy competition has its roots in the Willie Lynch brand of slavery. In 1720, on the banks of the, jo of the James River in Virginia, Willie Lynch told the slave masters not to trust black people. He told them if they pit us against each other, that it will perpetuate itself for hundreds or thousands of years to come. He taught them to pit the young against the old, the dark skin against the light skin, the male against the females, the AKAs against the Zetas, Zone 6 against Zone, uh, zone 1, Bloods against Crips, HBCU students and graduates against Ivy League students and graduates, um, graduates against non-degree people, and using my peachified imagination, the list continues. We have got to unify and be accountable to one another. Queen Latifah called for U-N-I-T-Y. U-N-I-T-Y. We need intergenerational and intragenerational alliances. We need the degreed and the non-degreed. We need to be patient with each other. Some people only know one way because the system has failed us. Our homework is to stop being too busy and too comfortable. We need to be part of the solution together. When I was making plans to host a Saturday school, like a Sunday school, I had one man who was 
willing to donate his beautiful building, but he said, quote, it will fail because the other pastors and churches will think you're trying to compete with them, end quote. We need to have a unified vision. It is my prayer that your vision will include components from the More Love Movement, which includes the Dr. Think and Shine Revolution for young people and those who love them, and the Overground Revolution for black women, peaches. Three, our third assignment is to have a personal vision, your vision. I heard a speaker say, what's behind you can't stop what's ahead of you. You have to pray about and think about your vision. Write the vision and make it plain. Habakkuk 2 and 2. Some may find it helpful to make a vision board with pictures, markers, photographs, or a combination. See yourself as happy, whole, and complete. You will see what you say, so write positive affirmations and confessions on your board. Sample confessions, affirmations. I love myself. Sickness can't dwell in me. Sin cannot dominate me. I will be better and more beautiful each day. I will not be distracted by things that do not matter. I will honor myself. God will supply all of my needs. The number of my days God will fulfill. I cast my cares on God because he cares for me. God gives me beauty for ashes, strength for fear, gladness for mourning and peace for despair. Those are just sample confessions or affirmations. Board or no board, vision board or no vision board, we have to decide each day to be happy and at peace. We also have to decide to plan and be successful. We have to have a vision of ourselves succeeding. Now is the time to heal wounds, unleash blocks, and launch dreams individually and collectively. Feminism is back. Womanism is back. Be who you are. Pretending to be a boss, a savage, will not heal your heart. Be who you are. Express yourself. Express yourself either in prayer, in a journal, with a therapist, or with a trusted friend. The following statements may be helpful when you complete them. Focus on them and share them with those in your intimate circle or with your therapist or pastoral counselor. Complete the following sentences. One, I feel happy when. Two, I feel disappointed when. Three, I feel secure when. Four, I will always. Five, I will never. Six, the things that are important to me are. And seven, I would like to do the following things. So if you could complete those sentences, that could be helpful. You are perfect, whole, and complete just the way you are. You will not only survive and get by, you will thrive. May, may you have success in all that you put your hands to. As I close, I share the following success tips with you, my peach. Success. S. Seek. Seek God's, God first and everything you need will be given to you. Matthew 6 and 33. You understand. Understand that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Philippians 4 and 13. C, create a positive vision of what you want and how you will get there. C, clear your mind of all negative thoughts. E, emancipate. Emancipate and encourage yourself, even if other people, places, and things discourage you. S, stay. Stay focused and see yourself fulfilling your purpose and living your best life. S, silence. Silence is your friend. Spend time in the silence, listening to God and being at peace. After you design your vision board, it is time to come up with some concrete goals.
our fourth assignment, number four, our fourth assignment is to complete or create a list of goals. We have an agenda for our political leaders. We also need our own personal goals. Our goals should be centered around questions such as, how do you want to show up as a parent? How do you want to show up as a partner, as an employee, as a manager? What specifically do you want to change, enhance, and or accomplish? Include in your goals plans to A, get or remain involved in your community, B, write letters and send emails to political leaders, C, <clears throat> keep the communication open with local, state, and national representatives to keep the relationships cultivated. We know what we need, so we need to, to be in the conversation. D, work with the Congressional Black Caucus, CBC, and other progressives, black, white, and other, who are already in the struggle. Get involved and know who our leaders are. Many criticize President Trump for not knowing who the CBC is, but do we? How can we expect the Commander-in-Chief to know who the CBC is if we do not know? And then I have EFGH where you can fill in your own assignments. Then number five, our fifth assignment is to establish a timeline for each of your goals, if a timeline is applicable. We have individual visions and goals, but collective goals are critical for this movement. Six, our sixth assignment is to make special efforts to help those in our intimate circle across class and generational lines. Seven, our seventh assignment is to tell our stories in song, poetry, music, prose, speeches, sermons, spoken word, and sign language. You have an important story. So tell your story. Tell your story. Give one for the dream. We need intergenerational and intragenerational teaching rather than ruthless competition and shade. Number eight, our eighth assignment is to be yourself. Ralph Waldo Emerson, whose room I lived in during divinity school and who was elected like I was by his class to preach the graduation message at Harvard, said, quote, to be yourself in a world that is constantly, constantly trying to make you someone else is the greatest accomplishment, end quote. America has always been indifferent to women's rights. A perfect example is that Hillary Clinton was probably the most prepared presidential candidate in American political history, yet she lost. If a white, millionaire, blue-eyed, Yale-trained, blonde, privileged female lawyer who was mistreated, just imagine the way we, peaches, are treated, especially those at the bottom of the barrel. If women in 2016 on Harvard's soccer team Harvard soccer team were debased, what hope did the black dancers who cried rape at the hands of some Duke lacrosse players have? Number nine, our ninth assignment is to grussle. That means grind and hustle. <laughs> we have to pray for and cultivate a work ethic. My paternal grandfather was a janitor. My paternal grandmother was a janitor at William and Mary College. I was a maid on Saturdays at Dr. Dawson's house during my undergra undergraduate years. Don't be embarrassed to do the work, whether it is with a mop or with a laptop. We've got to put in the work. Rihanna said, work, 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 work. There ends chapter 11, our homework. Now, chapter 12 is a very brief chapter and it's something, it's the concluding chapter of the book and something that you'll do in, in your private time. Chapter 12, Our Prayers. I thank God for using me to write this book and using you to read it. I pray that it will bless Peaches for hundreds of years to come. I pray that God will fill you with his Holy Spirit right now. I pray that every work of wickedness, destruction, malice, hexing, and curse spoken against you or our race and gender be overturned and broken by the blood of Jesus. 
I pray that God will break generational curses of poverty, self-hatred, and disunity and replace it with all good things in Jesus' name. I learned from Agape Ministries more than 20 years ago that prayer has six parts. Praise, thanksgiving, confession, intercession, petition, and then listening. Fill in the blanks for your prayers. Praise. What do you praise God for? Thanksgiving. What are you thankful for? Confession. What do you have to confess and seek forgiveness for? Intercession. What do you have to pray for for other people, places, and things? Then petition. What do you have to pray for for yourself? And then, my friend, listening. This time in the silence is one of God's most precious gifts. He speaks, if you will listen, spending time in the silence. So that's the final chapter, our prayers. And I'll put my prayer request line down in the description. You can text a prayer or leave a voicemail for a prayer request. And that's area code 540-759-4279. Or you can email a prayer request. I'll put my email address in the description below. Thank you so much for joining me for the reading of Peach's Woman's Thoughts on Finding Peace, Overcoming Peril, and Tapping Power. And we do have appendices in the book, um, Appendix I can just list them right quick for you. In Appendix A is a reading list. B, a self-care. C, how to be motivated, not mad at the world. D, let the healing begin. E, thriving. F, in honor of her. G, tips for peace. H, being your own best friend. I, black women's rules for engagement. J, create your own reality and traditions. K, survey results from the 2011 Black Women's Oral History Project. L, a response to angry black feminists. M, confessions to enhance your internal dialogue. N, messages between a sex offender and his survivor. O, black women in politics. P, peach recipes. And then there's several pages of end notes for your references. So again, thank you for joining me for Peaches. And as Nikki Giovanni wrote, so seldom we read something that makes such good sense, we wonder why it hasn't been written before. Well, it has now. And we are fortunate enough to be able to embrace it. We all need to thank Judy Bowman, Nikki Giovanni, poet, known as the poet of the Black Revolution. Thank you for sharing the reading of this book, and I appreciate your comments. So in the meantime, love is power. God is love. And love is power. Power to the peaches. Peach power. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. And give you peace, power, and love. More love. Boost. <laughs>